There we go. Uh, welcome to Wednesday night Bible study here at Expedition Church, Expedition Church, where we're living a life of victory forged by faith. Trust you'll be ministered to and blessed, and God will work mighty things. God. Hallelujah. Well, um, I said that we will probably uh, segue into our Sunday morning since the next two weeks. I won't be uh, in the pulpit here. Uh, as we said, Jessica and uh, Cap will be ministering on Sunday. The following Sunday, uh, uh, Reverend Tad Gregorich, uh, the Dean of Rainbow Bible Training College, will be here for our church dedication. Hallelujah. And um, so what I'm going to do is I want to go ahead and kind of take the next couple of Wednesdays, or at least this Wednesday, and tie on to, instead of going three weeks on a Sunday morning, and we just finished Bible Life. Now, I don't normally go Sunday to Wednesday anymore. I used, I used to do Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. And if you miss Sunday night, Wednesday night, you miss two-thirds of what I was doing. And um, that was my hook to get you to come back to church. <laughs> and some folks still didn't do it. All right. All righty. Praise the Lord. Well, um, everybody say, God is good. Somebody say all the time, and somebody else say, God is good. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. We're talking about the supernatural church, uh, the, the Holy Ghost church, uh, you know, the book of Acts. Um, we call it the Acts of the Apostles. It, it, that just really isn't the correct this descript of that book. Why? Well, there were evangelists who did things. There were prophetesses. There was prophets. Uh, there were deacons. Hello? that did miracles, signs, and wonders. So it's really not the book of Acts. It's a book of the early church or the actions, as, as a, I like what J.B. Phillips calls it, the actions of the early church. That early church, anointed by the Holy Ghost, went out and did those things. Now, we really are the Acts 29 church. Okay, it's not being recorded in Scripture, but we're to be carrying on exactly what they were doing. We're to be operate the same way they operated. We're to function the same way they function. And I, and I do propose to you that if the early church needed signs, wonders, and miracles, we no less need them today. Okay, as a matter of fact, um, the Bible teaches us that, you know, that we will experience as in the days of Noah. <clears throat> and if we're going to, if we're going to come um, cross grains to a generation of people that Noah, like Noah encountered, we definitely need the power of the Holy Spirit. So God is good. And we're talking along these lines and we, um, let's just go ahead and give you Acts 10, 38 as, as a note. And power, and with power, who went about doing good. So the, the purpose of the anointing is to go do good, right? For God was with him. Now, you know, in, in, uh, later in church history, it became that ministering to the sick, laying on the hands, was people doing the works of the devil. Yeah. There was a there was a rock artist, and I can't remember if it was Alice Cooper or who that had an album called Healing. Healing, it wasn't about healing supernatural, about, but I, I I remember thinking when that al I remember seeing the album cover. Where the church accuses ministers who lay hands on the sick for healing of being of the devil. Hello. And then the that's God. God says, "I am the Lord; I change not." Amen. Jesus Christ, the same. Jesus did not become a different Jesus when um, he went to heaven. His command. of scripture or when the last apostle died what you're you're insinuating is that there are no more apostles in the body of christ 
but he gave some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and teachers for the work of the ministry, for the perfect, for the perfecting of the saint, for the work of the ministry. In Ephesians 4, when the gifts were handed out or given, I mean the 12 that followed Jesus and saw him one another, no. No, there'll be no more apostles of the Lamb. But to equip the church, okay? Um, you know, the day of the last apostle died. Now, we, we generally accept Southern Gospel Quartet songs, the Revelator. Huh? Yes, yeah, that, that deep bass, yep. Yep. Was the last apostle of the Lamb. Okay? And they couldn't kill him too easy. They tried to boil him in oil, and that didn't work. <laughs> he had a Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego moment. Amen. Uh, but can you imagine, you know, that John's on the earth, miracles are still happening? Signs and wonders are still happening because the last apostle is still alive. And they got, you know, they, a church has, has some people that are, has a woman in there that's been there. And they, they call for John the Revelator to show up and come pray for this woman to raise her up. And, you know, and here comes the last apostle. And he arrives on the scene, goes to the house and knocks on the door. The door opens up and the light of the glory of God floods the house. Because the revelator is here. And he walks over to the bed and they say, they say what's, what's here? And they say, well, she's sick and she's dying and we want you to raise her up. And, and he's, he's like, well, praise God, I'm, I'm here. It's good to meet you, sister. We're going we're gonna to minister to you. And he's, he's about to lay hands on it. He goes, what? What? Lord, what? Okay. Boom. The light goes out. The woman dies. And all miracles on the earth cease. Because the last apostle just died. At the end of the age. Now that is a dumb. When you, when you break it down that way, it sounds really stupid. But people say stuff like that all the time. And they get on their spiritual face. Miracles passed away the day the last apostle died. We don't need signs and wonders anymore. We just need intelligent faith. That's contrary to everything the Word of God taught us. That's contrary to everything the ministry of Jesus taught us. That's contrary to everything that went on in the book of Acts. Or the day of the last apostle. Forget that one. We move on to the canonicity of Scripture. 400-something A.D. at the council of whatever. I'm not sure what, what was the, um, was it, it wasn't the Odyssey, was it? It was, um, it was, yeah, in that time frame in church history. But, you know, they're getting there, and they're putting the canonicity of Scripture together. They're determining which books are canon and which ones aren't, you know. And you got all these evangelists all over the world. They're working miracle signs and wonders because we don't have the canon of Scripture. See, when that which is perfect is come, that which is in part shall be done away with, you know. And so, you know, Brother So-and-So has got him a healing revival going over in, um, you know, wherever. And they're over in the city of wherever putting this, this canon together. Not, not a boom, boom canon, the canon of Scripture. Now, just so you understand, the term canonicity comes from, the, from a Greek word canon, K-A-N-O-N, and it was, it was, it, the canon referred to the reeds that were in the Red Sea or the Sea of Reeds, okay? And they used to use those. They would take those up and use them as a measuring stick. And so it was called a canon, and that meant the full measure of the Word of God. That's, what that, that's how that term came to be. Because in case you ever wonder where canonicity came from, what does that mean? And so it, it came from that, that word meaning the full measure. Okay, because they used that, that reed as a measuring stick. It was called a canon. Okay. Did y'all not know that? Okay, now you know that, right? Now you've been, you've been taught that. Okay. All right. So, you know, they're over here, and they're working on getting this whole thing put together, and they're saying, well, the book of Maccabees is good, but it's not, uh, Susanna, no, nah, uh, we like it, but it's not canon, you know, um, th th several other books, you know, we'll just call them apocryphy, we, we don't accept them as canon, uh, some of these other things that were written, well, nah, we don't like those, they're not, they're not canon, whatever. 
And so it's got a healing revival. He's, pray, he's going down the line praying for the sick, and they're passing out into the Spirit. Glory to God. I mean, people get getting miracle signs and wonders, and he gets this one guy. I mean, he's on his last leg. He's about to go at any second, and they go, boom, wherever the old city. This is the canon. And that which is in part is done away with. The power of God <coughs> flees the building. The evangelist stops and goes, oh, my God, the anointing has left. Sorry, pal, you're on your own. You need intelligent faith. Don't they say that just sounds stupid? But people speak that like it's in the Bible. Like, I mean, we have Scripture. It's one of those apocryphal books, apocryphal books called First and Second Opinions. Okay? I don't accept them as canon either. Okay? All right. So the, the church is a miracle sign and wonder church that is in our great commission. All you people who quote the great commission and for people to go out and share the gospel and to do the works of God, et cetera, et cetera, you should be following the pattern of the great commission. All right. So we move on to the book of Acts, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Amen. What can we discern from that? Healing is good. I said healing is good. It is so good that under the old covenant, the very first compound covenant name of God was the God that healeth thee. It wasn't the Lord thy righteousness. It wasn't the Lord thy peace. It wasn't the Lord thy provision. Are you here? It wasn't the Lord thy banner of victory. Come on now. It was the Lord that healeth thee. Ken, uh, Schofield declares in, in his Bible, in his study notes, that Jehovah was the uh, distinctive covenant name of God to his covenant people, Israel. And that the compound names of Jehovah were an increasing self-revelation of who he is. That's pretty strong. Well, <laughs> that belongs to the Jews. Yeah, it does. And he who's not a Jew outwardly, but one inwardly, whose circumcision is not of the flesh, but of the heart. I'm a Jew. I'm a spiritual Jew. I've been born again. Abraham's my father. Amen. Therefore, if that covenant uh, uh, revelation name of God is to the Jew, is to me. Amen. So, the, but of all the names that could have been the first compound name, now we all would think, because, you know, getting saved is the most important thing, and I, I don't disagree with that. But of all the names that could have been first, the Lord that healeth thee, the Lord thy physician is the first, instead of, the, you know, Jehovah to Sidkenu, the Lord thy righteousness. That's, I find that interesting. Amen? Right there it says, I am the Lord. That, that, word, small, that caps is Jehovah or Yahweh, Y-H-W-H in the Hebrew. Okay? The healeth thee, the hyphenated cup. When you read that in Hebrew, it would be uh, Y-H-W-H hyphen um, Rapha. Okay? That, that, and then we translate it to English, the Lord with small caps meaning Jehovah or Ra Yahweh, the healeth thee. That's the first one. So healing is an integral part of the miracle, sign, and wonder ministry of the church. It's, it's of God. It has been. I, I think we're going uh, we're gonna to have to go through the miracles of the Bible because it's a miracle book. I mean, all the way through. I said all the way through. It's a miracle book. Signs, wonders, and miracles uh, – 
differentiate it from any other religion man has ever known. It's not a religion. It's a, it's a way of life. Okay? And the things that other religions promised, God's word delivered. Hallelujah. And so Jesus was anointed. He went about doing good healing. All, and notice the oppression came from the devil. Because, see, if you want to know what God desired, go to original creation. There's no sickness. There's no disease. There's no lack. There's no want. All that came after the fall. It was not original creation. So original creation paints for me the picture of what God desires. Amen. And what will be again when the new heaven and the new earth, new earth show up. For the old heaven and the old earth have passed away. Okay. But in the interim, we see God throughout history creating ways to minister signs, wonders, and miracles. Amen. We even use one of the symbols in our medical industry today, the serpent on the staff. You think, why in the world is a snake on a pole for an ambulance? The brazen serpent in the wilderness when Israel rebelled against God. And God sent fiery serpents because the people had rebelled, and if they were bitten, if they would look at the brazen serpent, they would be healed. And then Jesus said, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so shall the Son of Man be lifted up. Now what is this? You have the type, the brazen serpent, and you have the, the antitype, Jesus. The brazen serpent was a type of the suffering servant taking our diseases. And looking into Jesus will get you healed. But we go, well, God put that on there for a reason. And when, when they learn their lesson, I see too many people die not learning the lesson and not knowing what lesson they were trying to learn. How can you have an outcome of learning a lesson if you don't know what the goal is? Okay, you go out there and run. Now, you're down. We have track stars in our church now, okay? They're out running, but there's a goal to their running, isn't there? There's a finish line. There's something they're trying to accomplish. Can you imagine the coach saying, okay, go run. Well, how long and what, where, what, what, you know? Oh, just, just. Okay, here we are again. Such and such does not appear to be. My phone just came up with that. So I don't know if we're broadcasting or not, guys. I have no clue. Let me see here. I look like a frozen stick figure out here. Yep. Are we not? Are we, we're not. Are we broadcast? I got a black screen. Yep. Okay. So, if he, if Jesus went about doing good and healing all, then the church should be going about doing good and healing. Amen. All right. Now remember. No internet. Did we reboot? Okay. Walk in there and turn that, that power strip off, shut the whole thing down, and reboot it. Okay. Isaiah says, because see, human quart containers and then three and a half gallons more, I mean, three and a half quarts more. Oh, Jesus. He would have hurting on some collars, didn't he? I mean, at least six quarts of college. Huh? 30 minutes. They got to hold them down for 30 minutes. <laughs> All righty. So, so I see the red light. How did I get off on collars? How did y'all let me get off on collars? Huh? Send his word and heal the. And somehow I ended up on Aiden College Festival. 
You know, I'm good. Not many people could do that. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He sent his word and healed them. Okay. And delivered them from their destructions. Okay. Oh, that's, that's exactly where I was going. So in order to get cabbage collars here, you can't buy them. There's nowhere around here that sells them. I've got about 10,000 seeds because we got, we got them frozen in the freezer. And um, so we plant our own every year. Now, when I plant them and they start coming up, I do not get zucchini because that seed is genetically designed to produce cabbage collars. That's its, that is its, now I'm not sure what, what they use for plant life, but it is the plant life version of its DNA. It's internal makeup. It's not going to produce tomatoes. It's not going to produce zucchini. Not going to produce uh, gooseneck uh, squash. Get that and some onions and fry them in the frying pan. Get them all tender. Yeah. I'm talking too much about food, aren't I? You think I didn't eat before I came to church. I did. <laughs> Hallelujah. God's word is seed. God's word makes that very clear. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed, the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. So God's word is seed. The, the sower sowed the seed. I like it. You know, but in, in, in the pair of the sower, the, the, the word of God is the seed. So God sent forth his word. Amen. So prosperity seed will produce prosperity. Healing seed will produce healing. Deliverance seed will produce now. And the earth, or what? What are we? You're God's husbandry, King James says. Other words for that, synonyms are tillage, garden, a garden, a farm, a, a, a planting. So the word of God, see, you're God's husband, you're God's building, goes into our heart. It's sown into us. And it is designed to produce. That it would accomplish, it would fulfill, it would do what he sent it to do. Amen. So, when we get rid of, yeah, it's, it's, it's so best, it's convoluted, Jerry. You know, I'm an unbelieving believer. What do you mean? I believe Jesus is Lord. I don't believe anything else. I don't believe he heals. I don't believe works miracles. I don't, I don't. I don't I'm not even sure we word. Can you say amen? amen? I said you need to believe his word. Ed, he would do. Hallelujah. Amen. Because he said, church, that we're to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth in shall follow them that believe. He said that his signs would follow us. Now, we need to believe that up serpents, if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not harm them. They'll have authority over the devil, and they'll lay hands on the sick, and they these are all Sign and wonders is come under exercising authority or casting out devils, but actually exercising authority over demons, Amen. setting people free from mental oppression. I mean, we deal with that every day in our and in in where we're, my, my wife and our family work, the, the, you know, the different places. We, uh, uh, the young people now are coming in; they're so demonized they, they don't even know it. They think they're cats. They don't know if they're a boy or a girl. Hello. They got so many different um, identities. You, you think Carrie was messed up. No, I'm not talking about Carrie Hammonds. <laughs> I'm talking about the, the horror movie from the 70s 
about the, the demon eye, the, the schizophrenic, and she, you know, it was just full of devils, okay? Or the exorcist. And the thing is, now we got people full of the devil teaching these people full of the devil and encouraging them to be full of the devil. Exactly what Romans said. Basically, let me paraphrase it. They don't only condone it, they encourage it. That's, that's what the key, that's, that's the modern phraseology, what the King James said. You know, they take pleasure in those, they take pleasure in them doing it. Okay? But the miracle church is supposed to be exercising authority over demons. I like Keith Morrison. Demons are afraid of me. And they are. And it needs to be when you get up tomorrow morning, a gong goes off in hell. They're up again. Get ready. Battle stations. Instead of, oh, <laughs> go back to sleep, fellas. It's them. Come on. Y'all hear you going home. All right. And so um, the miracle church. If God's word is to go into our heart and we're to believe it, it's seed of God, it produces. And he said, the Lord Jesus Christ, the head of the church, was not speaking to an Old Testament Jewish nation about an old covenant when he said, go preach the gospel and these signs will follow. Hello. He's not talking to the priesthood about how to sacrifice and how to keep the, the sins of the people stayed for another year. He's talking to those who are the spearhead of a new covenant. And yet he didn't just, but listen, he didn't just stop. Go preach the gospel to every creature and these signs shall follow them that believe. Not the ones doing the preaching, but those that believe. Hello. It was to be a perpetuated, ongoing event in the church. That as the gospel is preached and people believe, they become preachers of the gospel and signs follow them. And then that next generation and signs follow them. And that next generation and signs follow them. And all the signs listed there are supernatural. Every one of them. Exercising authority over demons. Speaking in new tongues. Hello. Taking up serpents. Drinking deadly things and it not harming them. Amen. Laying hands on the sick and seeing them recover. That's all supernatural. There wasn't anything natural about the Great Commission. Nothing. They went everywhere preaching the gospel. The Lord working with them, confirming the word with signs following. What signs? The ones he just told them. We are the supernatural Holy Ghost Church. Amen. Now wake up and act like it. I might run my friends off. Your friends might need some devils run off. They don't need placating. They don't need to feel like, I'm okay, you're okay, we're all okay. We are not called to be Barney. I love you, you love me. We're a happy family with a great big hug from you to me to you. Won't you say you love me too, baby bop? Barney and baby bop. Hello. Y'all here? Now, before Barney and baby bop, we had the Coca-Cola song. I'd like to teach the world to sing in perfect harmony, Coca-Cola. Just made it more effective having it on the hilltop with knitty dresses and um, flowers behind the ear and, you know, the sun coming from behind them. It was so whatever. People don't need to be placated where they are and to be affirmed where they are. They need positive reinforcement. Jesus, listen, 
When Peter got up on the day of Pentecost, he didn't say, I affirm you. <laughs> he said, repent and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, and you and your whole household will be saved. Hello. The thing that was affirmation, you can't make people feel bad. We need a sign church. We need a wonder church. We need a miracle church that shakes people to their core. Hello. That puts the armies of the enemy in disarray. Hello. I remember um, Tony and Patsy Caminetti, uh, when they had gone down, when they, when they first went to Italy, they went, um, uh, they went to Palermo. Now, Palermo is on the island of uh, Sicily. You know what's in Palermo? The worldwide head of the mafiosa. Not, see, not just up in Italy. There's mafia up there. But the head, the lead, the center of the mafiosa, Sicily. And... Um, Actually, somebody had gone before, that's right. Somebody had gone before them, but they came and, and, and opened up in Rome. <clears throat> but the people who had gone to Sicily, there's another couple. Well, you know, what happened? When, you, when, you're in, when you're in Sicily, you pay protection. And so they came to them. You know, they're collecting money. The, the church is collecting you know, money. And they came and said, we, we need so much money a week. What for? For protection. We don't need your protection. Oh, yeah. We're not paying you protection. God's our protector. You were not paying you protection money. I said, okay. So they come back with machine guns. They were, going, they were going to take them out. They came to the church, and when they tried to walk through the door, it knocked them back on their back. Well, they got up and tried again. They tried three or four times, and finally left and came and saw them in the street later and said, you guys go ahead and do whatever y'all are doing. We're not messing with you. Oh, yeah, because they encountered what? The miracle church. They couldn't handle They couldn't deal with it. John Nuzo tells the story. Of, he's pastors up in Cranberry Township, Pennsylvania, and uh, John's grandfather had gotten saved. Now, he was a, he was a, he was a gangster. He was, he was Italian. Nuzo. Uh, okay. And, um, and he, I think he was a wise guy, you know, an enforcer. And he got saved, and, and, and you don't get out of the mafia. You understand this? You don't leave. All right, so because he left, they put out a hit. And so a guy, um, one of the one of the, the one of the other wise guys who's going to take him out, kn knew his route that he walked home every night from wherever he wherever he was coming from, work or whatever. And so he went and hid in the bushes. And news of his grandfather came walking, walked right by the guy, singing and whistling, and went on his way. And the guy saw him on the street a couple of days ago and said, where'd you get that bodyguard? He said, what bodyguard? He said, night before last, I was hiding in the bushes at such and such place waiting to kill you. He said, but when you were about two blocks away, you had some guy with you, big guy. And he said, he looked right at me, put his hand in his pocket like this and walked and looked at me the whole time as he walked by. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, there won't nobody with me. Oh, yeah, it was. They had, um, and, 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 and see, this is the supernatural church, people. In the Philippines, one of our Rhema grads is, was up in a, in a Muslim area, and um, they didn't like, the Muslims don't like Christians coming in. They kill them. They're infidels. All this stuff you see on TV about how the peaceful religion, hogwash, they will kill Christians. They don't do it openly in America because they'll lose any support anywhere in the world. With the, with the dumb Americans who get blindsided, get brainwashed by our media. Well, again, they sent somebody in there to, to kill the pastor. They walked in uh, with, a, with a machine gun and were, were, was, was going to kill the pastor up on the platform, and they waved their hand, and they went, boom, and couldn't get up. And so they went, and they finished their service, ministered to everybody, and when they got done, 
they waved their hand again, and that person got up and ran out, and they never saw them again. They could not get off the floor. A group was on another island, and they were sending people to kill the missionaries. And again, they saw them days later and said, where did you get that army? They said, what army? They said, the one that guards your island. They said, we don't have one. Oh, yeah, you do. We came by ocean. We came by water to come up there to kill you. And when we got close, there were guys in white robes with flaming swords all the way around standing there. So we're talking about, yeah, did that give you goosebumps? <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you. I mean, in the miracle church. Yeah. See, we can trust God. Yeah. We can go do the things of God in the supernatural power of God. Yeah. Amen? And shake the enemy. I mean, shake his bootstraps off. Yeah. Are you here? Yeah. Instead of being afraid of the devil. Brother Hagin said he was one time talking to him in a group of ministers after a service somewhere in some camp meeting kind of thing years and years ago. And um, this is back in the, um, the outbreak of, I think the Spanish flew out in California back in the 50s, late 40s, early 50s. I mean, so bad you had one high school football team, couldn't play the other high school football team because out of the two teams, only two players weren't sick and in the hospital. It was so bad. And the, one minister was asking, said, what are you all going to do? Brother Hagin said, I'll tell you what, I'm not going to worry about it. He said, I'll not get sick. He said, one of the other ministers looked at him. He said, he got real reverential. Brother Hagin, I wouldn't say that if I were you. <laughs> he said, why not? He said, he said, I almost got like reverent to the devil. Don't you know? He said, that's the very dude I want to hear me. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, one year I was working. They say, we, we got to be a miracle church. We got to walk in the supernatural. When I was working at the barbecue restaurant down in Greenville, um, we, were, we, we were having flu season or whatever. And, I, and, I, and every time I turned around, somebody was sick, missing work. I, I, and um, I just got bold. I said, I'll tell you one thing. I won't miss a day of work this winter. For being sick. Now, I had a couple of really good opportunities. I remember one morning I woke up. I know I, I didn't take the temperature. I, I had a fever. I was burning up. I could feel it. Felt like that a Mack truck had driven up overnight and parked on me. Okay? And did a couple of donuts in the parking lot on top of me. But I, my word was out there. I'll not miss a day. See, when you put your word out there, you get opportunity. Now, I got dressed. I felt bad. I looked in the mirror and thought, you look worse than you feel. <laughs> when I, it's cold outside. You know, when you got a fever, the last thing you want to do is go out in 20-some degree weather. You know? I mean, you're hot as fire. You got the chills. That are multiplying. <laughs> All right, I got in my car. Heat didn't heat up. By, by the time I got to work, it started getting warm in the car. I walked in, punched the clock, and it all left. Every bit of it left. Glory to God. See, we got to walk it. Amen. We got we got to walk it. We got to live it. We got to do it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh gosh, we have run out of time. Next Wednesday night, because I, I do want to, I want to talk about other supernatural things that happen in the church that we don't like to talk about, like Ananias and Sapphira. But let me say this. See, we always run, we're all running around going, God's a God of love. If my pastor has the first husband, and there's a church that there's a pastor that has a first husband. And the church embraces it. Do you know why the church is embracing it? Because he didn't fall dead in the pulpit.
Brother Sumrall, I was, in, I was in the meeting when he said it. Back in the 80s. He said, before the, day, before the Lord Jesus Christ returns, the days of Ananias will, re will return to the church. Because judgment begins at the house of the Lord. And judgment begins at the leaders of the house of the Lord. And this, this Mickey Mouse stuff is going to get cleaned out. Because he's coming back for a glorious church, having not spot or wrinkle. This pedophile priesthood, this womanizing ministries, hello, all this junk we've seen in the church that discredits the church and is swept under the rug because of the money and the power. God don't care about how much money is lost. He's got enough to take, make up the difference. It's just like when the, I, I don't want to stop here. The well-known evangelist of a certain denomination got caught with about having uh, m certain models in his bedroom on his trips. Well, well, well known. And the district that he was in, in his denomination, because in their denomination you had to tithe to the district office, millions of dollars a year were brought into that ministry and he, the tithe went to that district. There was a lot of money going into that district from that ministry. So they slapped him on the wrist when some penny ante um, rebuke kind of thing, three months, you know, and you're back in the ministry, whatever. Well, the headquarters, after reviewing the judgment said uh-uh you're off of television you're out of the pulpit and you're in counseling for two years before you can preach again and he dropped his affiliation with the domination they didn't care about the money there was enough of the old guys still there who said no this isn't about money this is about integrity this is about what's right in the kingdom of God, and you have no, but your ministry, your ministry's too big to shut down. Now, if it had been Sonia and Whippersnapper, they'd have shut him down in a heartbeat. Oh, you, you, you're, you're tithing $50 a year to the denomination, you're out for two years. We might not even restore you. No. But you bring in millions, you know what, like three months. <laughs> you can show reruns during that time. Some folks won't even know the difference. That's not going to cut it, folks. I said, that's not going to cut it in these days. We want the power. The vessels have to be ready. Amen. All right, let's receive the offering. I hope y'all enjoyed that. I enjoyed it. If you didn't, if you didn't. Hallelujah. Um, if you want to give, you can give electronically. Uh, through PayPal or, or Cash App. Uh, I guess we got our internet back up. Brother Bill, see how fast it's moving now. Still pretty sketchy. Your mission, whether you decide to accept it or not. Oh, it's thinking about it. Okay. If you decide not to accept it, you would lose your IMF status. Oh, so almost double. Okay. Jesus, help us. All right. Okay. So, um, you ready to give? Father, we bless the people as they tithe and as they give. In the mighty name of Jesus, we bless them. Come in and heaven's windows be opened unto them and pour out blessings they don't have room enough to receive in Jesus' name. Brother Joe, we're going to receive. Is there anybody in the house that has in house offerings tonight? Uh, just let Joe know. He'll come get it. If not, that's fine. Uh, those are sent electronically. Praise the Lord. And um, praise God. All right. We love you guys. See you next time here at Expedition Church. Have a good night. Grace God. All right. I'm not even sure if we're on. I'm, you know. All right. We are going to. Um, and I'm saying this, I don't know how to say it.